Welcome to the world of the Dukes of Hazard, a classic TV series that revved its engines in 1979, becoming an iconic fixture in American households. Do you recall the first time you tuned into the adventures of the Duke family and their unforgettable orange Dodge Charger, the General Lee? Or is there a particular scene etched in your memory resonating with you even now? Before we dive into your cherished memories, let's set the stage with some random facts about this beloved show. The Dukes of Hazard, set in the fictional Hazard County, follows the escapades of Cousins Bo and Luke Duke as they outsmart the law led by the bumbling but persistent Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane. The series blends humor, car chases, and down-home charm, creating a recipe for television success. Now, back to you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience tied to the Dukes of Hazard? We'd love to hear about that scene that left a lasting impact or your initial encounter with the Duke family's antics. Share your stories and memories in the comments below. So whether you reminisce about Bo and Luke's daring stunts, Daisy Duke's unmistakable style, or the unmistakable horn of the General Lee, let your memories unfold. The Dukes of Hazard has left an indelible mark on many, and your experiences add to the rich tapestry of its legacy. The Dukes of Hazard, a classic TV series from 1979, was born out of the creative minds of Jai Waldron and Jerry Rushing. Set against the backdrop of the fictional Hazard County, the show follows the adventures of the Duke family cousins Bo and Luke, along with their charming cousin Daisy and wise Uncle Jesse. The heart of the narrative revolves around the Duke's perpetual clashes with the corrupt lawman boss Hogg and his bumbling sidekick Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane. The series gained widespread acclaim for its signature car chases featuring the iconic General Lee, a 1969 Dodge Charger. Boasting a unique blend of action, humor, and down-home charm, the Dukes of Hazard became a cultural phenomenon carving a lasting niche in American television history. The show's memorable characters, catchy theme song, and the unmistakable rebel yell of the General Lee left an indelible mark on popular culture, solidifying its status as a beloved classic. Bo and Luke Duke, the central characters of the 1979 TV series, often opted for a bow and arrow over firearms due to their probation for moonshine running. Using guns risked violating their probation. This unique twist added a distinct flavor to the show's action sequences. James Best, the actor behind Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane, brought an interesting touch to the character. The cuckoo sound Roscoe made when excited was inspired by noises Best used to make while playing with his children. This choice aimed to portray Roscoe as more childlike and less threatening to the Dukes. In the second season, a behind-the-scenes dispute led to Ben Jones temporarily walking off set. The disagreement revolved around whether he should cut his hair and shave. During his absence, Cooter's cousins B.B., Davenport, and L.B., Davenport, played by Mickey Jones and Ernie Lively, stepped in. These behind-the-scenes insights offer a glimpse into the creative decisions and occasional challenges faced during the production of the iconic series. Such details add depth to the characters and contribute to the show's lasting impact on American television. Sheriff Roscoe Coltrane's transition from an honest lawman to a more dubious character added a layer of complexity to the narrative. After 30 years of being an upright officer, a budget change stripped away his retirement, pushing him into a different role. This shift in the sheriff's character reflects the impact of external factors on the show's storytelling. As the series progressed, it faced challenges in maintaining its audience, partly due to the emergence of competing shows. Notably, the debut of Knight Rider led to a decline in ratings during the latter half of the series' run. Despite not directly competing for airtime, both shows targeted a similar youthful audience fascinated by high-performance cars. This competition prompted producers to ramp up stunt and jump sequences, especially featuring the iconic General Lee. The rivalry between the Dukes of Hazard and Knight Rider even took a satirical turn in a crossover story featured in a 1983 issue of Cracked Magazine. Sonny Schroyer, who portrayed Enos, strategically negotiated his contract. If his spin-off, Enos, failed to last a full season, he retained the option to return to the Dukes of Hazard. As it turned out, Enos lasted only 17 episodes, leading Schroyer back to his role in the iconic series. These behind-the-scenes dynamics shed light on the challenges faced by the production and the strategies employed to keep the show engaging for viewers. 
The interplay between budget constraints, competition from other series, and contractual arrangements with cast members all contributed to the evolving narrative of the Dukes of Hazard, showcasing the complexities behind the scenes. The Dukes of Hazard, a mid-season replacement for Reb Brown's unsuccessful series Captain America, quickly became a cultural phenomenon in 1979. Beyond its iconic characters and thrilling car chases, the show harbored intriguing behind-the-scenes tales. Notably, John Schneider, who portrayed Bo Duke, fibbed about his age to secure the role, adopting a Southern guise despite being a New Yorker. This audacious move by Schneider added an unexpected layer to the casting process. Moreover, keen-eyed viewers might spot an additional Confederate flag design on the General Lee in early episodes. This detail, a crossed flag design with a small Confederate flag and checkered racing flag, subtly adorned the iconic car. The presence of this emblem highlights interesting nuances in the show's visual elements. The Dukes of Hazard, born out of creative minds Jai Waldron and Jerry Rushing, faced challenges in its later seasons. The emergence of competing shows, notably Knight Rider, led to a decline in ratings. To counter this, producers heightened stunt sequences featuring the General Lee. The rivalry even took a satirical turn in a 1983 Cracked Magazine crossover story. This interplay of competition and creative strategies shed light on the complexities behind the scenes. In summary, The Dukes of Hazard, premiering as a replacement, boasted not only thrilling on-screen action, but also intriguing off-screen stories from Schneider's audacious audition to subtle visual details and the show's response to external competition. The show's rich tapestry extends beyond its narrative, showcasing the multifaceted dynamics that contributed to its enduring impact on television history. Amidst the iconic car chases and colorful characters in The Dukes of Hazard, there's a lesser-known fact that adds an intriguing twist to the series. Boss Hogg, the conniving antagonist, had a twin brother named Abraham Lincoln Hogg. This doppelganger made a brief appearance in the episode Ba, Ba White Sheep, presenting a stark contrast to Boss Hogg's dishonest ways. Abraham Lincoln Hogg was an honest, law-abiding figure who wore black, showcasing a complete departure from the familiar traits of his twin. In a similar vein, actor James Best, who portrayed Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane, pulled off a double role with opposite personalities in Too Many Roscoes. This episode showcased Best's versatility as he embodied both the bumbling Roscoe and his more serious counterpart. Such instances of dual roles added depth to the characters and brought unexpected nuances to the series. Beyond the on-screen dynamics, the replacement of characters in The Dukes of Hazard brought about interesting behind-the-scenes insights. While fans initially expressed negativity towards the replacement Dukes, Tom Wapat and John Schneider, the original Bo, and Luke extended support and encouragement to Christopher Mayer and Byron Cherry, the actors who stepped into their roles. This camaraderie behind the scenes contributed to the show's continuity despite changes in the cast. Meanwhile, Daisy Duke's iconic yellow Plymouth Roadrunner had a brief but impactful stint. Lasting less than a year, the original vehicle debuted in the series on January 26, 1979, and met its demise in the episode The Runaway on January 11, 1980. This marked the end of the first 26 complete episodes, with the 27th episode featuring the introduction of a brand new 1980 Jeep CJ7 as a replacement. The transition also coincided with an episode where Ben Jones, who portrayed Cooter, was absent due to his dilemma about shaving, showcasing the interconnected challenges faced during the production. These lesser-known aspects of the Dukes of Hazard add layers to the series, from contrasting twin brothers to behind-the-scenes camaraderie and impactful transitions in iconic elements like Daisy Duke's car. These nuances, often overshadow would by the show's high-energy action, provide a deeper understanding of the complexities that contributed to the enduring appeal of the Dukes of Hazard in television history. As we wrap up this journey through the nostalgic lanes of a certain show featuring a spirited family in an iconic car, I invite you to take a moment and let the dusty trails of Hazard County settle in your mind. The Dukes of Hazard, a timeless spectacle that leapt onto our screens, wasn't just a show. It was a wild ride, a symphony of southern charm, daring stunts, and a good old dash of rebellion. Perhaps, as you've traveled through these tales of the Duke family, you've found a familiar echo of camaraderie or a resonating rebel yell within your own soul. Maybe you've reminisced about the uncomplicated joy of watching a beat-up charger soaring through the air, all in the name of family and justice. 
The characters, the cars, and the chaos, it's more than a show. It's a patchwork quilt of memories stitched into the fabric of our lives. Now, as you stand at the crossroads of memory and present, I encourage you to share your own reflections on this legendary series. What's your fondest memory of the Duke family's escapades? Which character left an indelible mark on your heart? Did the General Lee become more than just a car, but a symbol of freedom and audacity? Feel free to drop your thoughts below, igniting a conversation that transcends time and space. Let the comments section become a haven for enthusiasts and fans alike sharing stories and forging connections over a shared love for those hazard adventures. Thank you for taking this trip down memory lane with me. Your time and passion for these tales are truly appreciated. Until next time, may your roads be dusty, your engines rev loud, and your heart echo with the spirit of the Duke family.